Hello, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Today, playing some Historic. Historic Horizons is finally on Arena. I've been playing it all weekend. It's currently Sunday. Came out on Friday. I've been playing Jumpstart games over and over again, trying to acquire cards. The Jumpstart experience is not as enjoyable as I remember the original Jumpstart being. I wish there were a better way to acquire these cards, but that's an issue for another day, I suppose. I have acquired enough, and I'm going to start building some decks around these cards. In fact, the good thing about Jumpstart is it is introducing a ton of awesome cards into Historic. In fact, here is a list of all the decks that I want to look at over the next couple of weeks. Um, lots of tribal stuff, revisiting some old stuff like uh, Tempered Steel. It got upgrades here and there. So should be a whole lot of fun. If you see a deck on this list that you like, let me know down in the comments. Maybe I'll prioritize that deck uh, over something else and get to it a little bit sooner. As for today, we are playing Prodigy Burn because, well, Harmonic Prodigy is the card I was looking forward to the most from Historic Horizons. Now, I'm only treating it as a very simple 2CMC 1-3 with prowess with slight wizard synergies in this deck i think there are other ways you can build around this card for example if you want to tackle shamans i think there are a whole bunch of shamans that you can jam into a deck i'm pretty sure saffron olive already did that in a video yesterday or earlier today i'm not sure but that looks pretty sweet for now though keeping it simple just getting some extra benefits with its friend soul scar mage over here and more importantly getting some awesome benefits with the pyromancer this thing has impressed me so much alongside the harmonic prodigy just having one prodigy on the field gives us an extra two points of damage out of our pyromancer four damage leaves a two one behind for two that's insane if you can get two harmonic prodigies on the field and throw down a pyromancer then things get really silly i think every time i've been able to play a pyromancer answer with a prodigy on the field i've won that game so really excited to be able to play more of uh pyromancer i just really like this card overall then the rest of the deck is stuff that you would really expect a lot of burn here and there you know what do you want over on the sideboard, I uh, ended up putting Rampaging Ferocidon into the side because I was running into a lot of life gain strategies. I think Roiling Vortex is good for shutting off those big bursts of life gain, but uh, you know, against decks that are gaining one point here, one point here, one point here, it's really hard to keep on top of that with the Roiling Vortex. So you kind of just need the Rampaging Ferocidon to come in and just shut off the whole life gain strategy, especially against like Green White, Green White Coco, Angels, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, also decided to bring in three copies of Burning Hands. I was considering playing the Unholy Heat, a new card from the latest set as well, but I realized that getting Delirium with this deck might be a little bit tricky, and I'm not sure how consistently I can pull that off. I think maybe in the future I might try tweaking things here and there, and maybe seeing if it can make it work, but for now, just going to go with the Burning Hands if we need to kill some big green creatures. We also got a Braid if we need to kill some three uh, toughness creatures, and so forth. So that is the deck. We're going to be flinging a whole bunch of spells to the face and more importantly, trying to see what the format's looking like after a few days of Jumpstart being out. I'm hoping some people are starting to get a little bit creative, start building some cool decks, and maybe we can see a fresh new format that is free of, you know, Jeskai control 40% of games. That's the hope. All right, jump into some games and see you over there. All right. Well, maybe. <laughs> it, it, funny, funnily enough, uh, the first game that I tried to record didn't work because of the map, which in this show I'll talk about in a second. Um, but it was against Jeskai Control, so maybe the format isn't being helped by Historic Horizons and people are just going to keep playing um, Jeskai Control again. Oh, why can't it? Why can't Jeskai Control just go away? That being said, absolutely dumpstered them. So that that's cool. Um, yeah, I don't mind shocking here. I'm gonna shock and pay for it. Esper Sentinel's a little bit of an annoying card for our deck because, well, we do have a lot of spells that we fling off. I think I can also probably expect Thalia out of this deck, and that's going to be another big problem. We'll see. Okay. Big creature. All right, let's murder it and get a prowess trigger on the soul scar mage. Get in. Our level runner is going to have haste in a minute, so that'll be good. I like the what the opponent's doing. Humans is definitely a very cool deck. 
Ooh. All right. Well, the thing is, this is going to work out just fine because of Soul Square Mage and how awesome Soul Square Mage is. If they decide not to block, I'll just put the damage through and put out the Pyromancer. But they blocked, so we'll shrink it, kill it, and get in. Might have to rely on the Den of the Bugbear this game. I should have put out the Pyromancer. There was no reason not to. I don't expect a board wipe from a human's deck. General's Enforcer. It's awesome. But yeah, uh, the bad maps, I'm s because they're so abundant and I don't think I'm actually going to be able to get around them. Am I just bug bearing? Trying to push damage? Or am I going to put Gigantha in hand, hit them with the Pyromancer Pass? Mm. Look at this. Um... Yeah, those problematic maps don't seem to be going away anytime soon, so I'm going to have to keep considering them. I think what I'm going to end up doing is probably just cutting those games, not mentioning that I'm cutting them, and just take that approach to it all. Um, I like showing how my rank is changing at the end of games. I also like... It's getting a little sticky here. Uh, I think I'm just going to put that out. I also like showing like the deck through eight games in a row. I don't want to pick, you know, cherry pick eight awesome games, show seven wins out of 14 matches or whatever. Um, I'm sure you, you understand. But um, I don't know if I really have that luxury right now with the way my computer's been reacting. I looked into possibly getting a new computer soon, um, but it's going to have to wait at least a little while. This is really awkward. Where are all my spells? I think I just kind of got to wait for a little bit. Oh, what a great top deck. Can I please have a great top deck game? Not another 10 of the bugbear. That's now useless. Oof. What's the best? Maybe light up the stage is what I want to see, right? Well, re it's a redraw. May as well. But yeah, I, I think I'm just going to end up scrapping those games. Not saying I'm playing game one, game two, game three, whatever I used to say. When I would lead into a game and just put them in order. Accepting the fact that some of them have to get cut here or there. Lightning Strike, not terrible. We're going to save it. Hopefully try to build up a few spells. Boy. The good news is with these Soul Scar Mages on the field, the Indestructible is kind of irrelevant. I think I'm definitely blocking here. That's weird to me. What is this on? I don't like, like what's with the arrow? How do I know? Is it going to the Esper Sentinel? I guess it is, but it's really janky. Yeah. I'm fine with this. So two damage here. One, one. One damage, one damage. I don't understand. Oh, that's cute. That's really cute. Well, let's keep our boys alive and shrink down Judah, Judith. Not going to be able to get to pay for uh, the Esper Sentinel because it was at three. But that's fine. Hey, there's the light up the stage. Show us some good stuff. Um, Decline. All right. Well, I'm going to attack, and they have to block. If they don't block, they die. Um, I think, yeah, I'm fine. 
killing them? <laughs> yeah, okay. Weird one. I actually didn't think that game was going anywhere near my favor. But then, whew, hit like four cards in a row. I guess saying, please give me good cards works out sometimes. All right, got to focus. Wow, things are getting all hazy. Um, Rampaging Frostodon, maybe not terrible in this matchup since they're going to be putting out a ton of creatures. If I can get in for some residual damage that way, that's awesome. Uh, a Braid also might not be too terrible. I don't feel too hot about the Bowman Couriers simply because they're not going to get in. They're basically going to be able to attack. I'm going to sacrifice them immediately, and that's what's going to happen. I don't like it. Um, I'm wondering if I should also just take out the Lava Runner because it's not going to get big enough. It might trade here and there, but I think for the most part, it's not that great. Keeping in Soul Scar Mage and the Prodigy definitely for Prowess Triggers, and then the Pyromancer could maybe get a little bit of reach at the end. So I like where we're at. All right. It actually has been a little while since I've recorded. I had taken a bit of a break. I knew, I knew Historic Horizons was coming up, so I made sure to get those burn videos done early last week, and then I kind of loaded them up throughout the week and decided, you know, I'm going to take four or five days, just relax. Then over the weekend, I just played Jumpstart here and there when I could. But yeah, now i got to get back into the swing of things. What am I keeping? Am I getting rid of a land, and then I'm going to cry when I get land screwed? Yep, that's what we're going to do. I think it's necessary to keep the spells around. Oh, annoying. All right, get the Soul Scar Mage to the field, and that might be Shock Fodder. Ooh, nice. All right, while we're attacking... Am I killing the Sentinels, or am I just going to Pyromancer? You know what I think? I think we'll kill. We'll kill one Sentinel. We'll pay one of them. Our opponent's a little impatient here. Your go, your go. I'm thinking here. Speaking of playing solely, and I wonder if you guys can confirm that. If you've been playing Jumpstart, have you noticed that people are so slow playing Jumpstart? Oh my goodness. I don't know what is going on over there. Do I want to... I don't like this Esper Sentinel being on the board, getting them so much card value, but this Swift Blade Vindicator is going to be a bit of a problem. I wish I kind of drew a land so I could Pyromancer Skewer. Okay. Laugh at the opponent a little bit. Go. Down to 14, not bad. Just gotta keep their life total under wraps. Third Sentinel is a brutal. Irrelevant. Darn. Pretty rough. Alright. I don't like throwing out the Pyromancer because it kind of shuts off my skewer possibility. But I think what I'm going to have to do is just skewer for three going forward. But yeah, what, what was I saying? Oh yeah, jumpstart. I don't know if it's the servers have been really bad because I know for a fact something's been going on with the servers since they did that big update uh, a couple of days ago. Oh, that's so good. I need to get Rampaging Frost and on out to stop this life game. The uh, servers have been funky, but yeah, Jumpstart players are... S I, they just take a very, very long time. <laughs> That's, I, I, I really appreciate what the opponent's doing. I absolutely love Targic. So, prevent all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. 100% I'm throwing Targic here, or the Pyromancer in front of Targic. No question about that. We'll take our four. That's fine. Hmm. Rough. Real rough. Uh... This Vindicator is going to continue to be a problem, so I could just kill it. Hmm. 
As for Sentinel, giving them a card doesn't feel good either. Uh, yeah, you know what? I think I gotta get rid of the Vindicator. And I think I'm attacking with a Soul Scar Mage. Yeah. They want to give me one. Well, they have to give me two creatures. Yeah, I'm fine with that. Cool. That sucks. <laughs> Obviously, the drain. But I, I think I'm fine with it. I'm not fine with that. Game, come on. So I guess we're going to take a little bit of punishment from our own Barasadon here. That doesn't feel great. I'm going to hold the Lava Runner. I don't know if that's right or not, but I'm going to. Really good. Really good. We might be able to get to a point, though, where we can sneak a win here. Do I need to put the Soul Scar Mage in front of Thalia? I could just put both in front of her. And then, of course, they're going to take the Rampaging Frosted on, but we get rid of the Thalia. But they're going to start gaining life, and I can't. I think this Rampaging Frosted on is too important. You know what? Let's just take, take the three. Hmm. Maybe I should have gotten rid of the Thalia. <laughs> I think I'm throwing the Rampaging Frosted on in. If they want to give me two for one on it, I'll take it. Okay. Okay. Maybe this is not... That maybe was a, a very bad idea. Now I'm looking at it. That was a horrible idea, wasn't it? Maybe we'll be okay. Okay. I think I had to do something there. I'm not sure. Oh, now I'm done. No, I'm dead now. <laughs> That's interesting. Not really interesting. Okay. Really? All right. So I'll I'll be perfectly honest. I forgot that Judith was gonna ping me so much. <laughs> All right. I think it's fine. We're gonna leave it like that. My bad. Not bad. I tried to make moves. I didn't like where things were and uh, did something really stupid. <laughs> I really will. I want to go back and watch that one again. Hey, this looks good. All right. Opponent mulliganing a little bit. Sure. I will say, a couple weeks ago, my spirits were down in the dumps. However, after playing a little bit of burn... I'm I'm enjoying life again. I'm enjoying this game. <laughs> Burn is the answer in Harmonic Prodigy. Helping me out. That's a little annoying, but I guess we will exile it. Get in for two. Put out the den of the bugbear. Move on with our lives. I was kind of hoping that I could Pyromancer and Shock that turn, but... Okay. So we'll do this double trigger here. Four damage. Awesome. Light up the stage. And I was kind of thinking, like, I could go. Oh boy. I could go really hard and pump this way up, but then they're just going to chump block it. They let it through. So I think because they're letting it through, I'm going to try to get that extra point of damage here. 
Yeah. And now they have to find a way to kill one of their creatures, gain a little bit of life, or I got nine damage in hand. Okay, don't care. Don't care, cool. This is what I wanna see from our deck. This is awesome. Okay, so shaky second game. Things probably could have gone a little bit differently, but ending strong. That's a great little performance at the end there. Let's move on to the next one. Hopefully it's a good map. Don't jinx it, right? All right, keep going. Harmonic burn. Yeah, we can play here. All right, hey, one land. It's a, it's a cool looking hand though, right? How greedy am I? If I want to keep this, right? I shouldn't keep that. I'm keeping I'm keeping this. I know somebody I can't remember who it was. I really wish I, I remembered who commented, but they commented. I think it was Grill Burn commented on one of my videos, actually. <laughs> you keep some sketchy hands. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. <laughs> but it uh it's it's interesting. Never punished. Let's go. So we're against Merfolk first game, or sorry, humans first game, second game Merfolk. And we get to see the Shoreline Scout in action, making tropical islands. Look at this legacy card in historic. Even modern doesn't get that benefit. How nutso is that? Sure. All right, I like the way this is looking because I know they don't have a whole lot of interaction. So we're going to shock here. Double trigger on this one that can get in. Get in for five. And then next turn, things are going to look real good. We can give haste to our level runner, shock something, or we could just go pyromancer. Let's see if they're greedy. Oh, they're so greedy. Are they just dead? Oh, tap land. Well, we have to do this. So how much damage is this? Uh, eight. We don't have enough to kill them this turn. But we don't need it. Sweet. Okay. What are we bringing in? I feel like I want the Abrades and I also want the Rampaging Frostodons. Again, same basic theory. They're going to have a lot of creatures getting a few points of damage. Abrades taking out their lords when they start getting big. And I honestly think it's going to be Bomac Couriers out again because they're not getting in ever. And we'll take out one Lava Runner. So, see how that goes. Play it that way. Opponent with the quick sideboard, too. Oh boy. I think, um, so Merfolk definitely seems like it's going to be. Ooh. So, like, polar opposite of the, our first hand. Uh, I think I'm going to keep it just so I can snipe out some creatures, maybe rely on Gigantha late game, try to take the win there. Hopefully this live stage finds something. But Yeah, I think Merfolk is definitely going to be a good deck. I'm wondering how varied the deck is going to be, though. I think for the most part, you're going to see a lot of the typical stuff. I guess we'll do this. Um, but like humans, humans is a very interesting tribe to me because it doesn't seem like they have the auto includes. It was really neat to see the opponent in the last game playing the general's enforcer, not a card I would have necessarily expected to see in human tribals, especially right off the bat. Wow. Opponent really wants to get in for two damage. You got it. You got it. Okay. Well, let's just blast this. Get in for one. I'm probably not going to block with this because I think I need it to turn on light up the stage at some point. So we'll see. They did mulligan pretty hard. So. Okay. Well, that's a good card. 
Do I just want to put out the Rampage and Frost on? Probably not. I probably want to take out the Regiary now while I can. Extra couple points of damage from the Lava Runner, and I can light up the stage this turn now. So, I think this is probably the best approach. Those are two great cards. But yeah, the Merfolk, I think we're going to we're gonna see a lot of the Lords. They now have three Lords. The Mistbinder, the Regery, and the new Lord of Atlantis. Those are all going to be great. You can expect to see them in every deck. You know what? I think I'm going to attack. If they want to trade the Silver Gill here, that's fine. I can't believe it. And we're going to put that out. They have a master. Oh, that's what it was. That's the other lord. I said something different. But yeah, master of the Pearl Trident. Lord, I think I said Lord of Atlantis. They're similar, I think. All right. Well, I kind of really want to get these Rossidons onto the field. So I've got to slow down a little bit. Maybe I should have attacked him with the Pyromancer there. But I prefer not trading here. Uh, it's going to trade no matter what eventually. Of course, Pyromancer being one toughness is definitely the biggest problem with it. I wonder if Merfolk is going to have a way of giving opponents an island so that they can take advantage of this island walk. This This hurts. Which I should have seen coming. Pretty obvious that this was the play pattern that was going to happen. Knowing that they had this in hand. But it's okay. So let's get in with the Ferocidon. Skewer the Master. And hold up. I should have gotten in with the... Well, no, no, that's what I had to do. I'm going to hold up the Lightning Strike this time. Okay. Yeah, I guess this is kind of like a Lord. Hmm. So I could still Lightning Strike the Shoreline Scout. I don't know if I want to take three. That being said... I can definitely attack quite well next turn. Sorry, opponent. I'm mulling. You know what? I think I'm going to go this way. The so ward one. Be careful of ward, by the way, with this girl. It's going to blow out somebody. And we'll block here. Yeah, I think that's better. In the end. Send in the old Ferocidon, and then, you know what, I think I'm probably just going to go ham. Don't like going down to four, but awesome board. Basically dead on the attack. They're going to play out blockers. They're going to take two damage per blocker. Okay. Definitely scary. If we're playing islands, that's a, a line that is not available. So I just attack. Ooh. But I still just attack, right? Yeah. Doesn't matter. Sweet. Nice little win there. We're climbing out of gold. I fell down to gold because I wasn't playing at, or not all the way down to gold after reset because I wasn't really playing much last season so gotta climb back up gonna hit myth and mythic this time i think next one all right see if it works you'll, you'll notice now i'm pl i'm platinum <laughs> so uh yeah things have been a little bit funky been running into tons of that stupid pineapple map or uh banana tree map i hate it every time it bothers me anyways i got to platinum after that game and then i played another game after that things didn't go nearly as well it was an is it deck got land screwed of course you know you know how it goes but we're gonna bounce back we're gonna try to take down a couple of wins
try to get this video done. I feel like when I started recording this, it, there was a, definitely a lot more light coming through those windows. Don't have all night to be doing this. Hi, dragon. Ooh, merfolk again. Interesting. Think of a little bit more about the mono, mono blue merf merfolk. I'm not sure splashing simic is really going to be the way to go here. I'm just gonna empty my hand. I think eventually I'm gonna try to crack up on my courier. Get at least a couple of cards in. Okay. Attack him. Bring in that command speaker. Yeah. Happy to take three damage. Okay. We'll put the skewer here. Attack back for five. <sighs> Might be a Gigantha game, in fact. This deck kind of feels like uh, from the four cards that the opponent has played, very limited, kind of feels like this is a person who was playing Merfolk at one point and saw that they printed new Merfolk cards like the Shoreline Scout and were like, let's jam them in. Uh, but I think the Merfolk deck might be good enough just to go. I mean, maybe, maybe you go. Simic. But what red card do you really need? I don't think you need the Command to be good anymore. It's not, it's not good enough. Hmm. All right, let's light up the stage for three. Pay the full. Find cards that I don't particularly like. Okay. But they're at 14, attacking for six. Got to feel bad. Uh, they don't have double blue for the flash merfolk. So I'm not sure. Probably just, yeah, simple chump here. That's good for me. I think I'm going to hold the skewer, just put out the Bomac Courier. Next turn, maybe we're going ham with everything. Skewer, a Lord that they put out, some annoying blocker. We'll see, yeah, we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Kind of a Lord. Finding all the lands. Oh boy. Well, I guess I kind of have to put this on the Kumina. Shrink it on down to a minus one, two. <laughs> or minus one, one. All right. Math is not my strongest suit. And you know what? I think I'm attacking with everything. They want to block on the Bomac Courier with the Kumina speaker to prevent a little bit of damage. It's cool. We can sack it. Get rid of this mount. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal at all. Look at all these lands we're finding. If they don't block on the Bowman Courier, I'm definitely keeping it alive. Mm, sure. Happy with this. So we'll keep quite the board. And I can crack this bowman at any time. Hopefully get another card underneath it. It would be nice to find like a shock. Something like that off the top. Deploy it. Deploy the mountain. Swing in. A couple of cards. You know the deal. You know you know what I'm talking about. It's pretty, pretty straightforward gameplay. So this is why I don't particularly like the Simic variant. What's going on here? Right? Double forest. Can you imagine double forest... In a merfolk deck? Oof. Okay. They might have the flash one now. Oh, Coco. Okay, Coco. For some reason, not even on my radar. Pretty obvious that it was going to be a collective company, right? <laughs> So I could sack the Bowmat and try to save these, but I mean, what are the chances the Bowmats are holding? Yeah, I think I think I value the cards more. I want them. 
We'll just leave them like that. And do I put Gigante in hand? Yeah, why not? Okay. I think I'm just going to try to get three cards under this, two under this one, and crack them. Now, this is something I've not done on Arena. I don't think I've done it on Arena. I think I may have tried it once or twice. You can definitely crack both Bomac Couriers and stack them in a way that you get all the cards into hand. Uh, I should probably try to do that. Oh, a full value Silver Gill. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to see if I... Oh, skewer. Well, I got to cast a skewer. Okay, so I think I want to be in full control mode. I'm attacking with both. Do your blocks. Still, no. Why did it take me out of full control mode? Don't take me out of full control mode. Okay, so crack. Okay. Yeah. And that goes on the stack, and then we crack, and we pay. We'll get five cards into our hand. Something to keep in mind. And can you believe that only one out of these five cards was able to get me a win in a burn deck? Oh boy, that's a little too close for comfort. Hey, get the win. Cool. So what do we want against fish? Probably not burning hands. Uh, yeah, I keep bringing in old Rampaging Frosted on. Maybe it should be honorary main board. Uh, Bowmack Couriers don't feel great. I only really like the Bowmack Courier against like Jeskite Control or something that's going to be a little bit slower. We can get in for the first few turns. That's the plan with that one. All right. It's, it's been working, so I'm going to keep doing the normal thing. All right. Try to finish off these merfolk. Nice to go 2 0. All right. Uh, this hand probably not going to be good enough, right? Yeah. Is it, is it worse? <laughs> Same but worse. Uh, you know what? I actually think it might be a little bit better. I think the Rampaging Frosted on probably going to be better overall than the Harmonic Prodigy with that combination of cards. Um, no more, no more lands, please. It's fine. Four. Comfortable there. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna shock it. I don't feel good about doing that, but I feel like I have to. Hey, look at that. We get a new shock. Not great. Uh, Kamina, gonna be a problem. Rampage Proston can block it, kinda, unless it gets unblockable, but yeah, this card just has a whole lot on it, and I definitely don't want to be using two shocks to murder it. Uh, yeah. Stick to the plan. Frostodon out. Maybe the Frostodon can start getting in some damage. It's going to be hard to block with the Menace. Kuala. So spells your opponent's cast that target a Merfolk you control cost two, including itself. So it kind of has like Ward 2. Let's murder Kupala. If they have a dive down here, that'd be real sucky. And I think I'm willing to get in here. I think we are kind of racing. I'll take the one point of damage from the Soul Scar Mage, get on the field, and uh, go from there. So things are looking okay. Paula, huh? Hmm. Okay. That's bad. Real bad. Gotta find a lightning strike or some three damage spell. That's the opposite of that. 
Am I willing to attack in here? I don't really want to take 10 on the crackback. So much. You think they block? There's no way they block, right? So then they go down to... So do I go ham? If I go... Let's say I attack, they don't block. I'm going to be getting in for 10. Taking them down to 4. 4 is not a good number. If they were taking them down to 3, I'd consider it. I think what I'm doing is just attacking with the Ferocidon. If they want to take some crazy double block here, they can do that. I didn't think so. And I think I'm just putting the Gigantha in hand, holding up both the shocks and the Soul Square Mage as a blocker. However, this is probably going to get tapped down. Just kind of got to hope that they don't have. Yeah. I mean, of course they have one, right? Ah, maybe it was adult. Maybe it was attacking with both. Yeah, the Rampaging Frosted on dealing one point of damage was something I didn't really consider. Oh, I'm so happy they're only attacking for four here. So, 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 so fine with that. Okay. Game hates me. Game hates me. Is it okay to go with both? Probably not. But it's kind of the same situation, right? They just can tap down something. So... I guess it's attack with both. Force them to block with something, although they just block with the this thing, see the sky. Still, giving minus four, minus four might be able to do something somewhere. We'll see. It's a really maybe a hard block for them. They're gonna have lethal on board if I double shock this thing to keep the soul scar mage alive i mean the soul scar mage kind of just dies uh i couldn't i can double shock the marrow ridgery that goes down to a four five and then this will die still maybe that was a stupid attack do i just have to put out the gigantha and hope that they don't have yeah hope they don't have a way of tapping down Gigantha. I think that's what I have to do. Yeah, I think I'm just... I, I lose this game. I'm not sure. Maybe there was something somewhere. This one... This is one of those... I think I've talked about it before. I always feel like at some point in the game, like something felt, feels like it could have been different. And I'm getting big vibes of that. But when I'm looking at things here, like I don't have a whole lot. Oh, are you serious? Wow. Okay. Yeah, hit me for five. That's cool. How do they not have a merfolk out of all these cards? Hmm. Not really in any better shape, am I? Just gotta attack, right? With both? No, I can't attack with both. Can I? <laughs> oh, why is this so hard? I think it's like... I don't think there's an answer here. I think I'm 100% going to lose this. But I feel like maybe there's some stupid little thing somewhere... Got to attack with both. I, mean, <laughs> I die. Uh, I guess I can... Yeah, I guess I'm not dead. Let's kill Kumina. Okay. 
put out the rampaging ferocidon and i don't know <laughs> hold on for dear life if i if i can find a win here i'm gonna be ecstatic i don't have a wizard so wizards lightning off the top is going to be pretty bad Like, I'm looking at the ramen up runes. If they put out one more merfolk, though. Color of flame. Color of flame. So, am I attacking with everything again? Or, no, what am I saying? What am I saying? Oh my god. I'm whew, glad I, I'm thinking things through a little bit better than I sometimes do. Wow. Ah. <laughs> I I need to stop recording videos and just go lay down for a bit. But I can't do that because I need to play one more. So, one more. All right. Just hoping for a, a good map. I think this is fine. Yeah, this should be fine. Uh, and hand a little high. I really wish I had a one drop, but I think it's worth keeping. Yeah. Uh. You know, I will say, yeah, you know, there are streamers out there that they, they play magic for like six, seven, eight hours a day. I cannot understand how they're able to do that. Like, I, I really appreciate their ability to sit there and play magic for hours and hours and hours. I cannot do it. Um, and I mention that because when I have these days where there's a game that goes a little bit weird... Uh, and I'm not allowed to, you know, I'm not able to record it. Sometimes I'll play it out. Um, yeah, we're attacking it. It adds a lot of time. So, uh, you know, usually it takes me about two hours to record my games, I think, typically, uh, after doing the intros and that. Uh, but when you double the time, you know, I had a bunch of games today that I wasn't able to record. Uh, it really takes a lot out of my small brain. Okay, so what are we doing here? Because things are looking pretty spicy. <laughs> ah, all right. This is what I was talking about. When you get two harmonic prodigies on the field, things get so fun. Like, how do I lose from this position? <laughs> This is what I'm talking about. I love it. I love Pyromancer plus Prodigy. It's just magic. Alright, so this is Gruul. Uh, they didn't put out anything big, but I think probably bringing in Burning Hands is going to be a smart thing to do. I'm going to go out a couple of those, couple of, or one of those, and play like that. Yeah. Okay, that was nice and fast. The game knows I'm getting fatigued and I want to go and have a bit of a break. I like having the shock in the opening hand, knowing that they have the Pelt Collector, something that I can take out. But I don't like having just a Harmonic Prodigy. If I had, this were Soul Scar Major. Let's go. I'm going to keep it. I don't like it, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. We draw action for the next couple of turns. We'll be, we'll be laughing. Okay, okay. You know what? That's a shockable target. You don't need old Mister Big Fist. <laughs> Look who showed up. Hmm. We'll just play on curve. You know, Mister Big Fist, is pounding me. <laughs> I don't like it. You take your energy somewhere else. Opponent seems to be having issues with mana. Last game, I think their their lands were a little funky. Maybe a similar thing happening. Which is, uh, yeah, I mean, something I haven't really commented on. I did try to make this as a Boros list out of the hop, and oh boy, it, things just didn't really feel right to me.
Uh, I really wish this were instant speed. Be nice to hold it up. Oh, thank you. Thank you for being impatient and using the Bone Crusher Giant early. Thank you, thank you, thank you, opponent. Yeah, I tried to make this a Boros deck because I thought, hey, why not? Clever Lumomancer seems like the ideal card to have in this list. And um, yeah, it just didn't really feel right. So they had to collect a company. The thing is, I can get a whole bunch of triggers here and I, maybe I don't care about the collected company. But what do I do after is the question. It's a red deck, whatever. It's going for it. It's got a massive Soul Scar Mage. This feels like so much wasted. Okay, do I need to do this? Like, what? what's the worst case scenario? They collect a company, they hit two Gruul Spellbreakers, they put eight power on the field, block, block, or block, block. It's really awkward for them. Okay, you know what? I think it's fine. I might regret this. We'll see. Let's see your collected company. Easiest decision of my life. You cheater. <laughs> that's fine though. I mean, we're that's a lot of cards to just stop that. And we can put old Gigantha in hand. Cool. Um, doesn't exactly do much against that. Like, yes, I do this. Take two damage. Swinging for five. Hold up the burning, tr uh, burning hands. Hope they put out like a questing beast here. Not, yeah, questing beast would be pretty cool. Mm, they go that way. Not too surprising. Shock. I mean, I can still use it on the Bone Crusher Giant. Yeah, let's do that. Wow, okay, they're dead. It's a big stack. Sweet. So, get out of it. Get out of this video with my sanity. And uh, yeah, things are feeling good. This deck feels awesome. Let's go to wrap up, talk a little bit about it. All right, so I don't really have anything to say about this. It just feels like a good deck. And I think it feels good because it's really not changing much of the formula from what I was already playing as far as like a mono red deck goes. Um, Harmonic Prodigy fits into the deck so well. Just as a, pro a prowess creature, it's going to be impactful and useful. Just the fact that we get a little bit of extra value out of this is pretty awesome. The one area that I'm maybe a little bit iffy on is Lava Runner and Courier. They're not getting too much value from the Harmonic Prodigy, but I really don't know what I could be bringing in uh, as far as like one drops go in red. And that's the area that I'm feeling a little bit like something's missing. I certainly could be putting in the Dragon Rage Channeler. The problem I kind of mentioned before is I don't have a lot of ways of triggering that Delirium. I think Dragon Rage Channeler is going to be one of the craziest cards in the format going forward, but it goes into a different type of deck, in my opinion. Maybe we could try it out over something like the G2 Lava Runner. You do get double surveil triggers, but I don't I don't know. Maybe maybe it is supposed to be in this deck. I'm not sure. Outside of that, I don't really know what other one drops we have access to. It's pretty limited. Not <laughs> not a whole lot. Uh, as far as shamans go. And then wizards. We're with this. Now I could end up putting in a lava mancer. I think that might actually be good. Putting in just like one over maybe one Bomac courier doing something like this. That doesn't feel horrible to me, just to give a little bit more reach once we draw this card. It's always nice to be able to utilize the graveyard if we can. So something sh needs to be done e with those cards, but I'm not really sure what to do. 
Otherwise, everything else seems cool. The sideboard also seems pretty cool. Really impressed with Rampaging Frostodon, a card that I have to get used to playing a little bit better. I definitely had some issues with it at times. Still, it's worthy of being in the deck. Um, Relic of Progenitus, I didn't bring it in for a single game, but we played Humans, Merfolk, Merfolk, and Gruul. Don't exactly need Graveyard Hate against those decks. And then everything else, yeah. It's there. It has a purpose. I think it's good. Gigantha, love having it as a companion. Probably not going to change that. Den of the Bugbear feels super good. Love having access to it. And of course, Ramen Up Ruins ending games so often. So anyways, overall, this is my build of the Prodigy Burn deck. I think it's what I'm going to stick with. I might actually keep climbing with it. I'd like to get a little bit higher maybe before I start messing around with some other decks. But uh, yeah, for now, that's it. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. Take care for now, and uh, I'll see you on Wednesday, maybe. Bye-bye.